Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode eight. Is that right? Episode eight, yeah. Episode eight of Business Life podcast from Food Circle. Uh, I'm James. I'm Paul. And um, today, well, we actually announced last time that we had Jamie Crummy on next from Too Good To Go. Um, but actually, we've managed to get another guest booked in in between now and yeah. then. So this one is actually with Darren Ford yeah. from Same Day, um, business based here in Sheffield. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, no, it's, we're looking forward to this. So same day, uh, they do same day deliveries in Sheffield. Uh, amazing idea, really, and a, and a ballsy idea, I'd say, yeah. for business. Um, so you'd be able to order some clothes from a Sheffield retailer and get it delivered to you within two hours. Um, they've also started branching out into like a VIP service as well, where, um, for example, Champs, which is a, a restaurant in town, a bar, you can get 10% off on like food and drink there. Yeah, like an using exclusive their club. Yeah, yeah, exclusive yeah. club, which I'm going to be part idea. of, actually. Amazing um, idea. And um, yeah, what, what would you describe it as? Sort of Instacart meets kind of Deliveroo, maybe? I don't know. I don't, I don't know if Darren, little bit. I don't know if Darren will thank us for that. Plus, <laughs> like a VIP. There's so much more, though, because it's like a VIP club on top of it as well. Yeah. Um, sorry, Darren, if we've just done you a complete injustice there. <laughs> We'll, we'll find out. Let's see if I'm down about what it's all about. Yeah, well, we'll hear from Darren in his own words. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Yeah, enjoy. One last thing, actually. Uh, I don't know whether to put this at the beginning or the end, but um, if you watch our podcast on YouTube, yeah, because of technological reasons, oh, yeah. um, I might not be visible through the entire thing <laughs> um, because we've done it on Zoom and for sound reasons, I had to be muted. So... Um, uh... If you are watching it on YouTube, then uh, you're welcome, basically, because you've probably not been able to see me for the whole thing, apart from the intro and outro. So, yeah, thank me later for that. Darren, welcome. Welcome yep. to episode eight of the Food Circle podcast. Darren from Same Day. How's it going, mate? You all right? Yeah, I'm not bad. I'm not bad. One thing I'm happy with is that you said it correctly. I know we talked the other day, but yeah. it, it's always nice to hear it. Hear it correct. What do people call it? Samday. Samday. To be fair, what's the best one I've had? Sam. Oh, samurai. Samurai. <laughs> yeah, yesterday I had samurai. Um, I've had samurai, but I love it because it's a it's a talking point, ain't it? People yeah. are like, how yeah. do you actually say it? But yeah. yeah. Well, it's it's a bit like when you get an email and people get your name wrong and you, I get like Jason, Jamie, you know, all sorts of different stuff. And I don't know how, because my email, like my name literally comes up when I email people, but you know, <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things. And we, we, when we get stuff delivered here, we get drivers coming and they say, Oh, is this a circle supermarket? Is this circle food? <laughs> well, I, it says it on the label, mate, food circle. How can you get that wrong? <laughs> literally what? same with me with my second name. Cause like yeah. everyone either spells it wrong and puts Ford as the car. And I'm like, I'm yeah. not a car. Come on. <laughs> or like they call me 40. So like that took off with rugby. It was just like, oh, you like 40? I was like, yeah, yeah. I'm. But now I'm just literally known as 40. So I'm, I'm yeah. happy with that. All right, 40. I'll call you 40 on the rest of this. Uh, uh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name so, again? <laughs> <laughs> Sim, uh, yeah, Homer Simpson. <laughs> but, uh, so uh, 40, um, uh, tell, us, tell us about same day, mate. Cool. What do you want to know? Where, where do I start? Where do I start? How did you how did you start off? Where did what were you doing before it? You know, how did you come yeah. up with the idea? And what, how does it all work? Sweet. So, kind of initially, it was I was playing rugby professionally. Um, at that point, I was down at Hemel. Yeah, I was in Hemel Hempstead. Well, I was in Sheffield training for Hemel Hempstead, um, and kind of not thought I'd always known that I wanted to start a business, but I was like, I don't know what it's going to be in. And I was training the day before our game. Um, so we had a game down down in Hemel. We had set off at seven in the morning, I think. Well, get to the coach for seven in the morning. Um, and we're training on the Friday. The game was on Saturday. Um, and my mate, Jono, um, he loves these shout outs. He's like, yeah, you owe me money. When it's big, like you owe me a cut. I'm like, definitely not. <laughs> um, his boots broke on that evening. He's like, oh, 40. Have you got any spare boots for tomorrow? I've, obviously, I can't go out now. We finished training. There's no kind of no way I can get them I can't order them and then come in time for the morning and I was like oh mate I've not nobody else in the team had any boots there's like and we just started joking we're like oh imagine you could order them and they would come like straight away and it was like oh that would be crazy and not kind of realizing that was the initial idea 
that's kind of where it stemmed from. And I was like, oh, that would be mad. Mm. Fast forward a few years, well, I say a few years, kind of a couple of months. Um, mm. My fiance um, were at uni at the time and she was going out. Um, mm. I would say a bit too much, but you know, it's uni, isn't it? <laughs> um, no, she was just going out um, and with her friends. She always like, she'd look at the wardrobe, have loads of clothes and say, I've got nothing to wear. Like there's literally nothing there. I was like, what, you've got a full wardrobe? And then like all of her friends would come around and it'd be exactly the same. Oh, I wore that last time. I've had a photograph in that. Like we, we need something tonight, but if we order it, it won't come in time. We've not got time to go. And kind of that kind of pattern just, continue to grow and it was like ah oh, that initial idea i had there is a market for it and then kind of you do your research and you go into all that and it was like oh there is a market there's nothing out there like it um amazon are moving towards that but they've not nailed it necessarily at the minute um so that's kind of where the initial idea started um and then you will both know kind of the process from there it's your research and just delving into it in taking too many hours to do that and yeah so that's where the idea came from basically and started when was that then when we, what we're talking time wise when you started like looking into it and thinking do you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna go for this see i was talking about it the other day with my rugby mate um alex the guy that did, did my hair um yeah. <laughs> and he was saying that when we were kind of talking about and i was doing the research that was 2018 but the initial idea must, I've always said 2018, but the initial idea must have kind of stemmed in 2017. Um, but when I started taking it serious was 2018 um, and sat on the back of the coach with all the boys just drinking and having a laugh on the way back and I'm there doing my dissertation. And then yeah. kind of, oh boys, can you do this um, questionnaire for me on Blooming, whatever it is, monkey quizzes or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, <laughs> So it's been a long time in the process um, to catch, well, yeah. I say two years and just research and building some, well, building the app and just putting it together really. Jeez. Uh, yeah, I've seen it. The app's amazing on the website as well and your branding and everything. Yeah. Uh, so, so when did you actually launch then? You launched the actual business? So we launched, um, well, there was meant to be a full launch in April um, 2020. Then mm. that, well, it was meant to be earlier. It's meant to be February. Then I pushed that back just because the app, there was a few things that needed tuning. Pushed that back um, until April. And there was a soft launch in April, um, which nobody knows about <laughs> because um, of COVID. I was like, oh, great. This is amazing. So I was like, right, bring it back, um, restart. Um, and then ended up pushing it back till, was it June? Yeah, June, June last year. Yeah, June 2020, um, and kind of launched the same day delivery then. And then obviously with COVID happening, it was like, oh, it could be great. But then at the same time, the businesses that I've got on board, they've had to shut. So it was like, right, what, how can I pivot this yeah. to word of 2020 and make it work? But not only for my business, other businesses as well, because yeah. obviously the businesses that I was partnered with, they'd shut down and they were struggling and everyone I was talking to, they're like, oh, I've had to close or I'm not getting the business. So it's like, right, how can I shift same day to work in my favor, but then also other businesses and just basically help Sheffield improve really. Yeah. Yeah. And I can imagine there was a big opportunity there because of all the businesses yeah. that had to shut like bricks and mortar that wanted to pivot and go, well, we need to start doing um, deliveries. Yeah. So it's actually uh, per what a perfect time to have started up. Yeah, and it was, to be fair, a lot of the businesses that were kind of keen for it, they, mm -hmm. they'd they almost said to me like they were working towards that or kind of shifting towards that, but not necessarily same day. They're like, oh, yeah, we're online, but we're just wanting to make it kind of unique for the customer. And at that point, um, there was absolutely no one like it in the UK. Um, I think it was February, well, in when we launched, I think that same month, um, another business kind of came up in London, um, oh. but they're pretty much in the same place. Um, they're, I'm not even going to shout them out. Forget that. Nah, <laughs> no, nah, don't shout competitors out. Yeah, no, we won't. <laughs> don't we won't shout out competitors? Absolutely not. You better not, uh, bloody hell. Yeah, I was, what's the space like then? Because I imagine is it crowded, like for same day delivery, or is it? You know, is there a bit of a niche there and a bit of a market to to dominate? 
Yeah, it depends which way you look at it. Um, and especially kind of doing my business plan yeah. at the minute and looking for investment um, from that side. If you look at the, obviously like the food delivery, it's absolutely saturated. Um, and then when you go to, there's a lot of businesses doing, oh, we'll deliver anything for you. Um, so from large items to a letter that you need delivering. Um, but a lot of them, the target market, they literally just market to any anybody that wants something delivering last minute. Um, there's yeah. rarely any B2B. Um, so the market is saturated in that sense. But then when you go down to fashion where, same day initially started there was literally there's nobody doing it apart from that other business that i won't mention um <laughs> that kind of started um so in terms of moving towards the fashion yeah absolutely huge um but i think where same days pivoted now towards more of a lifestyle app that will be created to now implement the new um aspect of the membership that we've just launched um mm. in that sense no there's mm. pretty much no competition um, obviously there's businesses that could obviously pivot the same or um, come into the market for example Deliveroo if they wanted yeah. to they could adapt their app um, and implement those parts but um, yeah. Yeah, there's a huge huge potential yeah That's, I, I, we love hearing about so it's like startup stories so tell us about um, when you literally first started up what was the first few months like then was it was it grim or was it? I know it's that's probably the most exciting part of starting a business, actually, isn't it? Is when you first mm. start, like potentially, especially before you launch and you're building it all up, and then yeah. like, you're dead happy, and then all shit starts hitting the fan, and you realise how hard yeah. it is, <laughs> and then it starts yeah. to get grim. <laughs> I'm so trying to think, like, it's so it's it's so mad thinking back to it because like I'm so in it at the minute, and I'm lo absolutely loving it. Um, yeah. So to think back at kind of the first parts i think so i'd got i'd proposed i don't know yeah i'd proposed to my fiance well girlfriend now fiance um and it was like i'd pumped so much money into the business um just to kind of get it to that stage and make sure everything was right um and then i'd proposed so kind of launching the business the main thing was just <laughs> getting everyone on board in like mm. in my family and supporting it. Um, yeah. I think Annie, she was absolutely amazing um, yeah. from the sense of whether it was money or just time, just she was just there for me um, yeah. without getting too soppy. Yeah, she absolutely smashed it. Um, so I think the initial months, it was just, I think straight from the offset, it was just hard. It was, there was no orders coming in. The businesses yeah. did shut and it was like, right, there's, I've literally put all of my savings that I had at this point into that mm. and to not have any orders, not have the businesses that are on board and they are still on board. Absolutely amazing, amazing people and their businesses are great. But there was, I think the way I'd say, oh, there's no push from me for them to market same day. They were offering it, but they weren't kind of going, oh yeah, we're using same day. So for me, it was right. I've given you something absolutely amazing. Um, yeah. But you're not telling everybody so i was i was just like oh can this work and then you start doubting yourself you start doubting what mm. it is and there was covid and everything and everybody was saying oh yeah you're stupid like why have you set this up at this time and i think yeah. the longer that went on the can you just go into a hole don't you mm -hmm. and yeah it was just right there's 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 nothing and i think as soon as i kind of talked to my mentors I've got a mentor down in London, um, Raymond Rodriguez, absolutely amazing. He's a life coach. Um, and I think he almost shifted my mindset with it. Um, and that's where the membership kind of side of it came from. And as soon as I started working on that and getting my teeth into that, it almost shifted everything. Within a, probably a month, um, it was like I could almost see a light at the end of the tunnel because there was no businesses wanting to come on board because they, even though it was free, they were saying, we're shut. We, yeah. we don't want to offer anything new. We're just focusing on getting through this period. We don't know if we're going to be there at the end. Um, so yeah, I think that shift was for me, the light at the end of the tunnel mm -hmm. when I began to start enjoying it. So for me, the actual launch and that first period for me, wasn't the startup of same day. 
um, this period now is the launch of same day where there is a full direction of where the business is going, not only kind of in the short term, but like long term. Um, yeah. So yeah, it was yeah. a mix of dreading, I can't do this and why have I done it to, oh, this is amazing. Yeah. What was that like initially, like approaching businesses? Because obviously with COVID in the mix and everything as well, that must have made it extra difficult. But mm. what what was well, it like? Were you getting sort of um, were you getting knockbacks? Were you getting people saying to you, you know, this uh, this you know we won't be on board with this. You know, there's no chance it'll work. Or did you get a positive sort of reception? Or how did you sort of deal with any knockbacks that you got? Yeah, well, a lot of the businesses had come on board because I set a target of five. Well, between three and five um, for the initial soft launch. Um, and I'd contact the, contacted them and they were onboarded in January. Um, so ready in January, ready for a launch in March. So it was before COVID, so there's no problems there. Mm. Um, obviously, trying to get those last two, that was the hardest thing because you, you're going to businesses. Um, most places, they were unsure whether they could let you in. So it was... <laughs> And if I'm very honest, I was going in, I had no idea how to pitch it. And I was trying to, at the beginning of the business, I, would, I wasn't me. And as you saw the other day, you saw me as me, yeah. um, <laughs> probably too extreme. Um, but <laughs> but um, I was going in, like one place I went in, in a suit jacket. And I was like, because they were a nice place. I was like, it wasn't me. I went in, I was like, oh yeah, so there's this, this, this. As soon as I walked through the door, they're like, nah. Like, I'm, I'm not just salesmen in it that people yeah. just don't want to sales when walking in literally um so i think that was a quick learning curve um but yeah in most places they were receptive to me but the idea they didn't and it was most probably my fault they didn't understand it and understand the concept of okay mm. i don't need to pay anything it integrates directly with my website and you can deliver within two hours um not how i can say that now i don't think mm. i was getting that across then yeah um and then obviously once you go into COVID times, it was right. I know that I'm a nice guy and I'm a good people's person and people will buy into me. Yeah. But when you can't go and visit people, it's like trying to get who I am across in email. Yeah, non existent. So yeah. from that that perspective, it was just kind of nah, there's there was no in for me until yeah. I obviously adapted again. Yeah, you've got you've got to be yourself. Even yeah. at work, if you've not been in a business, you've got to be yourself full stop. Otherwise, it's just knackering. Yeah. I remember when we first started out in the, our first proper job, like trying to be dead professional and like just be a different person. It's exhausting. You've just yeah. got to be yourself. And like you say, if you're a nice enough guy, um, people buy into you anyway. People don't do business with business; they do pe- yeah. business with people. It's so true that like. Um, we talked about it last week with um, Daniela and Natty. Like when we first started buying stock from suppliers, hmm. we were just keeping it in our garages. Um, but we were like just trying to get our personalities across whilst doing business with them. So, because if some of these big brands we were dealing with thought that knew that we were keeping stock in our garage yeah. and that the business was tiny, they wouldn't have done it. But because we got our personalities across and built up a relationship, they said, hmm. yeah, let's, let's do something with you. Um, so and I think a lot of the time when, when it comes down to sales, people try and sell the unsellable and they, they, they um, don't realize that sales is all about uh, finding the people that need your, that actually need your service yeah. instead of going, just trying to force it on people, which just, it, it, it never works. But if it is work, works, if it ever does work, it's because that person just wants you to go away. And yeah. they're just like, yeah, it's just horrible. Like, please, <laughs> I'll do yeah. anything to get rid of you. Right? I'll buy your service or whatever. And then they're like, oh, God, I've yeah. done it before when I was younger. It's just, it's horrible, isn't it? Yeah, it's, when I was pt um well, so kind of before I even thought about the business, I was personal training. And some of the training you got was very much kind of hard sales. And, yeah. oh, yeah, I, I want to talk to my, my husband about it and think about it. And it was like, oh, don't let them leave. Yeah, you've got to get a sale in there. And that yeah. was my kind of initial um, engagement with sales. And it was just so wrong because yeah. it, it wasn't me. And when I kind of broke out of that and I was like, that's not me and not how I do mm. it. And I'm just genuine. Oh yeah. If you want to talk to your husband, yeah, go. If you don't come back, that's fine. Like it, it doesn't bother me. Um, I think, well, just from that experience, like I had clients, I'd 
finished PT in for two years and I had clients message me, oh, are you ever coming back? I'm like, no, <laughs> well, I'm really not. I've not got the time. And I think that for me was the biggest learning curve yeah. coming into business. And especially now I'm talking to bigger businesses that are kind of national. It's, yeah, it was a very quick learning curve of, yeah, just be myself. Don't pretend to know it all or have have it all just go yeah this is me and this is what i've got but i'll do everything that i can to make both businesses work really so yeah, yeah. i can Gym. definitely relate gyms are so bad for that some of them anyway like that hard sales they're not they don't leave yeah. you alone do they it's it's one of my like pet sort of peeves in in life generally like pressure sales tactics i'm i'm like bad for it because i'll just you know kind of go along with things to try and get get people off my back kind of thing and you just end up in a place where you feel so pressured you just want to sort of um run away so yeah definitely being yourself is like you know Mm. like you say he's absolutely spot on it's just Mm. just the key yeah Yeah. i had it the other week i'm gonna shout my in uh, in spec savers like i was getting my eyes tested and this person was trying to um push like what is it like contacts to try and get you to subscribe or something yeah and she just won't she just would not let it drop it was like going um you know oh we're both from yorkshire you know it's just stuff like they just I'm yeah like, look i'd say look just i don't want to do it that's yeah really getting on my nerves actually it's just, it does and it it's painful it is it ends up building like a negative well yeah for me it's you leave a negative mark on them or the opposite way around like i've seen people i'm like i'm never going back there again because you don't want to be sold to you just <laughs> you just want to get on with you like normal day if you get on with someone you're like yeah go on out listen but yeah. yeah yeah absolutely so yeah you know when you were starting and you you felt you were going into that hole yeah. and you know i'm gonna bring it up again mental health and starting a business yeah. is absolutely is not talked about enough and which is why we try and talk about it on every episode yeah um anxiety stress um is it's horrible in it and especially yeah. when you first start up because you've got nothing like now we obviously know our business works and we've tested yeah. it and we've proven the concept but in the early days you know you, you can't you haven't proven the concept so you're like it makes it even worse because yeah. you're thinking uh you know is this even going to work never mind oh you know we didn't hit our sales target yesterday yeah um so how, how did you get through that and were, were you working at the same time or were you like all in using savings and stuff so for me if i go to well i was working so i was playing rugby professionally so i was getting paid from that and mm-hmm. when i first started um i was at uni um and then i got my first well i said i was going to take a year out for the business um just to kind of i believed in it so much i was gonna yeah get it started um then my ex-teacher who actually got me into rugby we stayed in contact from there he called me up one day and was like oh 40 do you want I've, i'm head teacher now um do you want a job i was like oh, i'm taking a year out he's like oh it'll be part-time give you a bit of cash and it'll help me out i know you're good so i was like yeah sweet um so kind of i was started working part-time then ended up going full-time so i was getting paid so the money side of it wasn't I was, I was happy taking a year out and I'd had mm-hmm. my savings. So the money side of it wasn't a problem. I think for me where that hole came was pretty much this year, to be fair, yeah. um, where it was, I'd done launch, I'd not got any sales and it's like, right, okay, does this actually work? I know it's COVID times, but is it going to work after? Because if it's going to work any, at any point, it's going to be now when people are buying online. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, I'm very strong. Well, I'd like to say I'm strong-minded. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I am. I'm strong-minded and I don't get stressed very easily. Um, and my fiance will she'll go, yeah, he doesn't. But when I do, it's like, yeah, it's and I think that for me was January. I think I was talking about yesterday. That was pretty much January. And I just hit the, a place where I was like, I cannot do this. Um, I was doing my competitive analysis and looking at those big businesses that could transition into um, the market and literally take over if they wanted to. Um, and I, I'm very much, I focus on myself. I don't focus on other people. And obviously a lot of that's from rugby. It's make sure your house is in order, make sure your team's in order. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter what the other team's doing. Um, so for me, that was a place where I was like, oh, this is kind of unknown territory. I've never felt like I can't do something. Um, and I literally said, I was like, 
I cannot do this. I'm, I, I can't. I'm, I'm going to stop. Um, and my fiance, she was, if it wasn't for her, I think that night I might have gone, yeah, I'm not doing it because mm -hmm. I was, do you know when you get it in your head and you're fully adamant? Nah, I, I, there's no point yeah. because they're just going to take over. Um, and she, she just stood me up and she was like, right, you've got to this point. How many times have you looked to your competitors and gone, oh, yeah, there's this, that, and over? And I was like, yeah, but it's different this time. Yeah, but, yeah, but. And she said, no, you've done it. Focus on yourself. And what was it that she said? Um, she used the example of um, Just Eat and Deliveroo. She was saying that they're huge, absolutely huge, multi-billion pound companies and they're both in the same market. She said, Absolutely. it doesn't matter if somebody else comes into the market. It doesn't mean that just because they've got that, that you can't continue. Um, she was like, you just need to focus on yourself. And I think from that, it kind of clicked. It was, yeah, I don't need to literally back to where I was, but in a new sense, it's just focus on what I'm doing and continue getting that right. Um, but I think that was the biggest hole for me um, with that. But then also as well, if um, I go back to the Black Lives Matters, um, what kind of where that was rife last year, that for me was, I would say, the toughest time in my life. Well, not my life, but my life as an adult and within business because I was trying to run a business. I was, I don't think it was in the holidays, I think. Yes, yeah, so I wasn't teaching. Um, we couldn't go out. And it was looking at myself as a black man and mm. there was things that I'd not dealt with before that were kind of coming up, um, kind of with my dad and just things that I'd gone through as a kid and having to deal with those. Like there was days and I was just angry, absolutely fuming. And I'm not, a, I used to be absolutely horrible when I was younger and just couldn't control my anger. Um, now I'm literally the most chill out person. Um, but I was just getting so angry for no reason well it was for a reason but there was just anger um and i think there's days where i just start crying like yeah. literally i just start crying and um there was just one day and i was trying to explain it to annie um and she she struggled to understand what i was going through because it is very much hard to understand if you're not black or from a um, mm -hmm. minority um background um and I literally, I was just absolutely bawling. And she was hugging me, which is obviously so, for me, unusual. Um, yeah. Because obviously you want to be, as a male, you want to be there for your um, partner and be that strong person. Um, so I think that was, for me, probably the hardest time in kind of my life, but then also within the business. Um, and getting through that, it was, it was just talking about it and, um, that's how I ended up finding my mentor. So it was a thing called Dope Black Dads. Absolutely amazing. It started off being Dope Black Dads. That was, mm. um, I think there's 40 of them. And then that just kind of blew up. Um, and it was my uncle that invited me to it. And it was just a group of black guys, young, old, just talking about your emotions, love, everything that, especially in the black community, people don't talk about, especially men. Like, no. I think before that point, I'd not heard a, a adult black guy talk about bawling the eyes out and crying. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, wow, okay. And so, yeah, for me, just talking and just being open about stuff and yeah. to get through it, really. There's been a lot of um, polarizing stuff in the past year. We were talking about it this morning with this Pierce Morgan mm -hmm. shit yeah, and yeah. bloody um, royal family. Um, that's polarizing the nation as well. Like, yeah. there's people that are... are you know, team Harry and Meghan, and there's people yeah. that are team royal family, and it's causing like I think I'm bloody Piers Morgan and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's causing anger as well. Like you scroll through Twitter, and there's just people fuming, like yeah, just sat yeah. at home fuming at the Literally. phones about shit that they can't even control. Yeah. Um, and it takes toll on your mental health. There's yeah, there's BLM last year, uh, the Trump shit as well. Yeah, yeah. I think it, personally, I, we don't try and get political, but. Um, mm which is to stay apolitical, but sort of glad he's gone because he just caused such, like, anger and stuff. It um, is, yeah. And that's in this country. Uh, yeah. And it's not good for you, is it? It really no. isn't. But, um, and it just went, especially when you're trying to run a business. Yeah. You've got to try and, um, 
you've got to try and park all all of the types of stress because you need to focus. There's enough stress going on this side in you running your business, isn't there? Yeah, yeah I think I think having said that as well. Sorry, sorry. No, 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 it's fine. Um, it's kind of like I suppose for every action, there's kind of a, a an, you know an opposite reaction as yeah. well. And I'm not saying it's equal, but kind of um, I don't know. You'll you'll obviously be able to speak to this <laughs> a lot clearer than I will, but. The Black Lives Matter movement did a lot for awareness and for for bringing these issues to the surface, which is obviously a good thing as well. Mm. So obviously, you know, hopefully some positives came out of that from from your perspective and from mm. like the black community as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, but in general, thanks for thanks for opening up about what you what you said before, Darren, mm. because I think it is it is really important. Um, and you mentioned your your mentor, your sort of um, life coach, and you said mm. earlier that he kind of helped you to turn your mindset around and turn your mentality around. So um, could we delve into that a bit? Could we, mm. do you mind speaking about it? Could we ask yeah, yeah. like, um, that sounds class. could we ask what kind of he said to you and what he did and how he kind <laughs> of um, helped you to, d- to do that and change your mentality? Yeah. How much time we got? Because um, <laughs> I, yeah, I've, so one thing that I've always wanted to do. Um, so I teach, so as well as rugby, um, I'm a teacher um and that's been my passion since the age of 15 absolutely love it i'm good at it um and i'm confident to say yeah i know that if i walk into a school i'll be one of the best teachers there and that's not a thing of oh yeah i might sit like i'm good at teaching um but one thing i've always wanted to do is um be a mentor and basically and it will come but motivational speaking and things like that um so I've actually started from him and from what I've learned and obviously past experiences, I actually mentor now um, and I apply some of the stuff that he's taught me. But the first um, the first session that we had was phenomenal. It was a, he was like, oh yeah, can I call you on WhatsApp? I was like, yeah, cool. Um, and I'll give you a bit of a backstory about me and that. And then I'll yeah. kind of fast forward. Um, so a few years before I was, playing for Sheffield Eagles um, in the academy. And we tra- I think we'd finished sixth form early, gone to train, loving it. Um, we came back out and one of my mates, um, I think it was Jack or Bloomer, um, they're like, oh, 40. Um, we don't actually know, like we know you, but we don't know you. And I was like, what do you mean? They're like, like we know you in like a rugby context, but we don't know who you actually are. And like, it, it stuck in my brain. I was like, mm-hmm. Because I'm I'm a very open person, but then what I'd realised is there was almost different levels to me that, or as different people in different situations. All of them were me, but I was, and it's talking with a lot of the black community. It almost felt like we had to adapt to to basically fit in, Um, and that's what I was doing. So no one actually knew me apart from my very close circle which is about well my five boys um mum my fiance and even my mum wouldn't know me in some situations but now i'd say that is so fast forward to this call um he's just like oh tell me about yourself i was like oh yeah i teach i've done this blah 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 blah. um about 10 minutes i was talking and he turned around it literally is absolutely crazy um and he's like oh so you are around about 15 16 that's when you decided you wanted to be a teacher i was like yeah i was 15 years old like to the like i remember it very well it's like you'd come home from school and you just sit there and you'd process like a computer you would you would have your different visions of what you wanted to achieve and you just go over them and over them and over them and you'd have loads of time when you were um at home to be like just away from people um and you had in that time you're just thinking literally he was reading me like a book which to say he'd known me for 10 minutes and friends that i'd known for years weren't able to do i was like that is mental but he was pinpoint with absolutely everything um and (laughs) the end comment was um if i can if i can tell you all about your past and be accurate with it after a 10 minute conversation. Imagine what I can do with where you're going. Um, so after that, I was like, yeah, I'm in, go on then. What, what have you got to tell me? Um, and the main thing was from that lesson and it's where I start when I'm mentoring people, it's that you're broken down into three people. 
Um, so, and they all hate each other. So you've got your, who I am, who I think I am and who I want to be. And they absolutely hate each other. And in his words, what do you do with um, two people that hate each other? You put them in a room together until they fight it out and leave as friends. So the main th thing from that is you have who you are um, and who you think you are and you lock them in a room first. And this is what I do in the first session. And that is probably about a two week period. And now if you haven't done it before, haven't heard of it, you must do it because yeah, it's phenomenal in how your mindset changes, especially when you go to the last part, but it basically you write down who you think you are and taking away all those things that you where you're like oh yeah i'm confident because for me i'm i'm confident and i was like yeah i'm confident and i was like no if i'm very honest i'm confident in certain situations but there's times where nah i'm completely not confident so for example when i was playing at fev highest i've ever played um well second highest in the uk um i got there i was the youngest person and my confidence completely went because I, I felt like I was the underdog, whereas normally I, I strive with that. Um, so it's just being brutally honest with yourself. Um, then obviously you go through that process of who I think I am, and then you write down who you actually are, and you basically look at them until they, who you think you are matches with who you actually are. And then obviously you go on to um, the next stage, which is who you want to be. And I think from that, it was literally, I know it takes roughly 21 days to build a habit, but the day after um, I was, what time was it? I was waking up at five straight, literally straight away. Cause it was like, right, this is who I want to be in. Just from that one session, it completely changed. Um, but without, <laughs> and it's from a conversation we had, um, I think on last Tuesday. Um, one thing he did say was um, don't give out all your IPO um for free so I, I won't go into it too much if I, i'll give it away for free to you guys um but more on a personal level but yeah definitely um absolutely amazing um just the it's more about how you think and the the way you approach different situations and i, I know i'm talking a lot and i know it's a podcast but i like talking that's good like kind yeah. of like to and fro um but i need to say this um with he's constantly analyzing you and I'll send this to him and he'll just laugh at it. But um, one thing I was talking about my dad and I don't know why I wanted to tell him, but my dad stopped talking to me um, from, we got back from Barbados when I proposed to Annie um, in January. And my dad hadn't talked to me for months and months and months. Didn't know why there's no reason. And I just brought it up with um, Raymond. I was like, Oh yeah, I don't know. Honestly, don't know why I'm bringing it up with you, but I am. Um, told him about my dad he's not talking to me um, he's like as I, I've sent him a message that is not um, that I'm not bothered and just to reply when he wants to Raymond just, he just asked he's like but are you actually bothered I was like oh no 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 and he's like tell me the truth yeah. and I was like what do you mean like I'm not I'm not bothered and then he stopped me there he's like right if you got your face and you split it in half so half your face is it's got your smirk that you do and it's like oh yeah he's got me and the other half is serious and there's little things like that that you do as just a human being and you, you're not even aware of it um that deep down if you really really delve deep you're not being honest with um and i think that for me was one of the biggest things that i was talking the other day and i realized that i went what was it? Um, no, yeah, 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 yeah. And that first initial no was, ah, I don't, I think it was Raymond as well. He asked me something. Oh, do you get that? I was like, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like, but later on I went, yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, ah, that initial no. I, If I think about it, yeah, I didn't know it. But your body does so many things that you actually, that are yeah. telling the truth that you believe aren't. But yeah, long story, absolutely amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, it sounds, uh, it's important, isn't it? Mental, um, yeah, knowing yourself and self-awareness is going to be more important, mm. especially yeah. like running the company and all this sort of thing. 
Um, mm. Because if you focus on the right things, then don't you? You don't waste your time yeah. <clears throat> doing stuff that just isn't new. And and you know, uh, like I said, it can be exhausting. You, you mm. can really focus. Just just a better focus all around, really, isn't it? Yeah, um, yeah. Well, that, that's amazing to be able to have a mentor, um, and it's it's so helpful. You need to like download sometimes as well, don't you? Yeah, yeah. And it yeah. sounds like on on the on the level, really, yeah. in terms yeah. of like. Almost like give me his number. Getting into your soul, really. No, it is honestly like because I've got Morgan who mentors me kind of up in Sheffield, and that is very much from a business side. And it's I, I like to describe it as kind of surface level, um, mm. but yeah, with Raymond, it's so much deeper. And with Alex, who cut my hair, kind of the first few sessions um, I did with him, we had two sessions, um, and he will tell you we we had another session the other day um just on a whiteboard and we were planning out his branding um and we had another guy there that was also setting up businesses theo um and it's the first time he'd seen it and he just blew his mind and where alex has come from just this year um from and he won't mind me saying being in a place where he was like i don't have a clue what i want to do i don't know who i am if i'm very honest to a point now if you see him now absolutely different person like he's driven his he he knows exactly where he's got going and he he's got a plan to get there um yeah it's without being kind of cheesy it is life-changing like yeah. and it would be good to once his business is kind of up and run, running to get him on board because mm. here to hear his side of it yeah amazing yeah would you say that you ever felt like, like that like you didn't know who you were or anything like that yeah. i think we all get it from time to time but it mm. can obviously affect affect some of us like worse than others and you, you really want to mm. find those answers mm. um i think i've always had a good mind of who i am um mm. i think i've come away from it um and l not lost it but not been true to who i am um for different reasons whether it's to kind of fit in um but then I think, yeah, from a young age, I've kind of gone, yeah, this is me. Even to go into school in, um, I went to school in one of my mom's dresses um, to raise, well, no, it wasn't even to raise money. It was for a laugh. I went to school with mom's dresses, high heels and um, balloons as boobs, um, just for a laugh. And I was like, yeah, cool. This is, this is funny. Um, done like talent shows and stuff like that, just for a laugh. And um, so I think from very early on, um, I was just like, yeah, this is me. Take it or leave it. And like, um, it's not not bothered me. But I think as you get older, you especially well, not at uni, like rugby, you want to kind of fit in. And I've never been about drinking and stuff like that. But is in those environments, sometimes it's like, yeah, you've got to. Um, so I think through uni, I kind of almost lost myself a bit, and then at the end, kind of came yeah. back to where who I am. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, not, I'm not caring what people think about you as well, which is yeah, what's yeah. dead important. Um, yeah. But no. Does, do, you know, do you know the uh, in the black community or, or BAME community? Yeah. Is there like a is there a community of entrepreneurs and stuff? And like, or is there uh, sort of like inspirational um, businesses that you sort of look up to and, uh, you know, can take advice from and things like that? Or is it? You know what? What's what's the entrepreneurial entrepreneurial community like? Um, and I was talking to Raymond about it the other day. Um, the, it's pretty much you are either a consumer or you provide for that consumer. Um, very much so in the sense of, um, if you look at black women, they will either be buying hair extensions or selling them. There's there's not well, I don't know of any businesses that along the supply chain have control. It's just kind of to, to the consumer. There's no manufacturers. There's no businesses that are actually big. If I was to name any businesses that I know that are black owned, I couldn't tell you. Yeah. Apart from the people I've got around me in terms of like friends that are starting their own businesses. Um, no, I'd say Raymond is probably the only person yeah completely the only person that i know that's got a well got multiple successful businesses um mm. and he's just launched um a black owned e-commerce site so that'll be 
solely for black businesses to basically do what you're talking about and provide a almost like a yellow pages of today for black business yeah. businesses so you can go there and it's oh i'm needing a manufacturer to do this but i want to support black or I, I just don't know about any black businesses that are out there it's it's that opportunity um but yeah in answer no um there's yeah. there's not um, yeah do you reckon there's a reason do you reckon it's a diff- more difficult we were talking to the girls last week about female yeah. entrepreneurs mm. and the challenges they face and you know subconscious bias and all this sort of thing mm. um i think it's multifaceted mm. in a big way so i know for me being brought up in the well having to move from the poorest part of london well one of the poorest parts of london where I would have, I had two choices. Well, society said I had two choices, but it would have been one, either dead or a drug dealer. Um, They were my choices there. Moving up here, again, growing up in one of the poorest parts of Sheffield, where you've got drug dealers living next door to you, across from you and stuff like that. Um, And I know it's moving away from that kind of um, black side of it. Um, But ultimately a majority of black people live in the poorer parts of cities. I know not all, but I'm talking on like a bigger scale. So it's, it's hard to put it down to necessarily one thing. Obviously the environment you grow up in, you're labeled with these certain things that you're going to achieve. Um, I think as a black person, the only people you look up to are people in sport. I, yeah, there, there was no, black people that I looked up to that were in business. It was they all sports. And if you look at where I went, I did. I went into sport, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but I, th- I think there are, um, to not get into it too deep, there are, set, not setbacks, there are things that can't, that stop you excelling, um, whether it be interviews. Do you know, just like my name's not necessarily that bad, but I know um, my boy Kuda, Kuda Zambuco, yeah. <laughs> you, you can't uh, mess around with Zambuco, do you know what I mean? It's, um, there's been situations where just because of my skin colour, I've been declining things. I remember going to sixth form, and I won't name the sixth form because it was amazing once I was there. Um, yeah. But um, I, I think I had 14 GCSEs, all A, a star to the Cs. Um, mm. And I went up, I had my um, kind of puffer jacket on, mm. Um, it was Rastafarian colours. Um, I had my snapback on, um, and um, the owner guy there, well, not the owner, like the he wasn't the head teacher. He was a bit lower. Um, he was like, "Oh, like is he coming here?" Um, and mum was like, "Yeah, he is." And he's like, "Oh, what grades has he got?" Um, and like mum showed him, uh, and he's like, "What? These are his grades?" And mum was like yeah they are and he was like oh yeah yeah go, go, come on through and it, it there's so many times and especially through the black lives matters kind of period um i hate calling it a period because it shouldn't be that but yeah, yeah. that that time um there's so many times that that's kind of happened um that you look back and you go yeah actually that's that's been a block but then at the same time i do think that and some people will agree, some people will disagree, but it is what it is. I think if you allow those labels to kind of be fixed on you and that is your roof, then you won't achieve anything. And yeah. it's, it's a big conversation I had with Kuda and he, he's very much the same. There is racism in the world and there is racism that happens, but ultimately you, you can find a way past it. Um, and that's not saying that you should have to, but if you want to achieve something, 100% you can. 100% yeah. you can. Mm. Yeah. No, no, it's really interesting. It's amazing, really. There's loads of, um, yeah, especially when trying to start a business, you know, socioeconomic mm. um, yeah. factors are massive. Like, yeah. you know, this is coming from myself, like from a white middle-class family, being able yeah. to live with my mum and dad's, you know, mm. it was just so lucky, really. And it just yeah. made things so much easier. But mm. there's hard, not many people have that. Do you know what I mean? Not many people can do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and timing as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, mm. yeah. Hundred percent is it's massive. So, mm. uh, yeah, it was interesting. That's why I wanted to know because 
you know, there's undoubtedly challenges that come with it, and yeah. like unconscious bias again is is huge. Um, yeah. So no, thanks for opening up about that, mate. No, Appreciate definitely, it. Definitely. Um, so what what so where are you now then? You've you've got um, the new VIP part of the business as well. Yeah. So you start to pivot and bring new things out, mm-hmm. um, which is only going to get bigger and bigger. And we talked yeah. about it the other day. Mm-hmm. So what's the where are you now? What's the next step? What does twenty twenty one look like and beyond? Yeah. So um, as I said, so I've not actually talked about it on here, but same day is now moving to that lifestyle app. Um, where it will, rather than being just same day delivery and that, yeah, same day delivery focus and being just in fashion, um, same day will move towards um, the lifestyle app where it's a same day hub. So you'll be able to go on there um, on the mobile app, which will be built in 2021, where you can order last minute tickets, you can book last minute events if it's a restaurant, um, whether it's... um, your meal prep, anything like that. But last minute, you go on there, you can order it. Um, it will tie in the same day delivery. So if you say, I want to go to So Famous tonight for some food, and then I want to go to the lead mill for an event that's on, you'll be able to book your um, same day delivery um, for your clothing. So you go, ah, I booked that, it's last minute, I've got nothing to wear. Oh, I can get that. And then the last part is the mem- VIP membership so mm-hmm. you'll be able to actually get discounts um, on there um, as well. So that's the aim for 2021 to bring in the last part, which is the last minute ordering um, and booking system. Mm-hmm. Um, for now, it is moving, well, basically making sure that there's the be- all of the best businesses in Sheffield um, on the membership. So this week, well, the end of last week and beginning of this week, we've had four new businesses on board. Um, which are bigger, um, yeah. which I'm very excited to announce. And it's just basically continuing that. Um, I want every every month um, new businesses on board um, yeah. so that people can, especially once lockdown eases, people can go out, people can use it online as well to get discounted places and start bringing Sheffield up and making a buzz. That's the biggest thing that I want. And being a teacher, um, you talk about a buzz, and I know I can create a buzz in the classroom. For me, I want a buzz in Sheffield. I want people being excited to go out or order online and just be together again. Then we definitely are going to be. I think this summer, if everything goes to plan with this roadmap, my God, it's going to go mental, in it? Yeah, literally. <laughs> I, I, was talking, wait. I was talking to Kuda. I was like, <laughs> this summer is going to be mental. Like, it's, <laughs> it's going to be like, do you know when you're watching films in, like, in America? Like, yeah. oh, it's going to be mint. But yeah, yeah. that's that's the aim to basically get it absolutely huge. Do you know, like across Sheffield, everyone needs to know about it because ultimately it's nine ninety nine. Well, for the VIP, it's nine ninety nine for a year. Yeah, yeah. unlimited yeah. discounts. But yeah, I've yeah. seen I've seen so many memes and stuff like that about <laughs> like uh, picture the scene. It's June the whatever it is twenty second. England are playing. Yeah, you know, it's going to be sunny. <laughs> Let, let's just hope that everything goes to plan and uh, yeah. touch wood, kind of. You know, all the numbers stay where they will go where they need to go and mm. vaccinations and all that stuff because I think we need we all need it. You know, we we're talking about mental health earlier, like this this yeah. year, this past oh. year or so has been yeah. it's been it a challenge a for everyone, even if you know, um, like me, you're not always a person that's the most gregarious going out and about mm. everywhere, even you know, not having the options just been soul destroying, you know. Yeah. Um, so being able to get back to you know life and doing stuff and seeing people again. Um uh, yeah, it's it's gonna be massive. I'm gonna be getting ten percent off in champs, mate, with that VIP card. <laughs> mate, tell me, mate, you'll be excited for these um four coming on. Like really? I, I'm 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 excited for them. Um yeah. because I've not announced when's this gonna um come out? Uh probably oh, weekend. Oh, pressure's on me then. Weekend. <laughs> weekend. Saturday, Sunday. Oh, should I tell you? Yeah, go on then, I'll tell you. Go on. Um so we've got uh, oh no! I told you the other day. Did I? Did I uh, you? you told me about the restaurants. You told me about the Italian one. Um, I know Chakra's on. I don't think you did. Yeah. Oh, fair. So we've got Sheffield Eagles. Um, they'll yeah. be coming on board, uh, mainly for 2021 when they're back in Sheffield. Um, but they're on. Um, we've got the Escape Room coming on. The Great Escape. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which is a huge one because I've been there before. Absolutely amazing. 
Um, Hannah's lovely as well. Shout out to Hannah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, literally. Um, one of the best phone calls I've had, actually. Um, well, Good. apart from our one, obviously, the other day. Um, but yeah, just because she used to teach as well. Um, yeah. So just hearing her story, that was great. Um, we've got Revive Sneaker. Well, we're going to have Revive Sneaker Laundry coming on. Um, so you can get your shoes um, clean and stuff like that. And then Box Bar, who have opened up on Eki Road as well. Yes, um, yes. So Excellent. they're going to be absolutely huge. But yeah, so four big ones with um, a few more to come as well. Yeah, well, what, what about UK-wide? When's that happening? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> There's um, going to be hey, listeners thinking, I'm in uh, Plymouth when you're coming down here. <laughs> well, that, that, that is the aim. Um, obviously, once the app is finalised, yeah. um, then it's to, over to Manchester to focus on their boutiques and and take over Manchester. Yeah, it's amazing. I was telling you the other day, well, yeah. it's, it is a fantastic business. Uh, yeah. It's such a good idea. Um, and yeah, I think it, especially with this summer coming up, you've got a massive opportunity, I think. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I really enjoyed this podcast actually talking to... Um, a business that's like start just pivoting now and mm. like these businesses shouldn't be afraid to pivot like we've got we're working on some stuff here that's going to be totally new um i think that's important in, in any business is to be able to do new stuff take feedback on board and go maybe we should change direction and do this or try that out and take risks as well taking risks always yeah. be ready to learn i'm like failing being open to failure learning from it and then you know having losing that ego where you go yeah. oh, you know, I need to try something different. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it sounds, it sounds absolutely class. Mm. So we can't wait to see it uh, blow up this summer. I'll be getting my card to tell you that for, for free. Yeah, absolutely. And Definitely. Uh, I'll set up a, continued success as well. I set up a discount code. So I did it on um, Dennis Lav's um, as well. I set up a discount code for you and anyone. Um, <laughs> give you a couple of extra months. How many months do you want extra? Uh, I don't want anything extra, mate. I, I don't want any discount. Well, I'll give it for you I'll and anyone normal. anyone that's working with you. I'll give yeah. you an extra few months. I'll set that up now. Oh, mate. Oh, thanks so much. <laughs> Cheers, mate. <laughs> no, a... Thank you. We might... Um, uh, we'll do your shout-out and I will probably edit it this bit. In fact, no, will we edit this bit? No, I'll say on our next podcast, we'll shout you out as well. If you ever want us to oh, do yeah. like a... You know, we'll put any discount in the uh, podcast yeah, like yeah, intro definitely. and stuff. We'll do that. Um, but yeah, anything else? No, brilliant. I think, um, yeah, load, we've touched on loads of stuff there. I think, yeah. um, you know, great to hear your perspective, you know, from um, from a perspective of um, black, a black yeah. person yeah, yeah. as well. Mm. We've not had that before on the podcast, so that's, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, really appreciate you um, speaking so well about that. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think we've covered oh, loads you, and it's been, uh, been really enjoyable to talk to you. Mm. Yeah. yeah, likewise as well. Gordy, Darren, really appreciate your time. That was class. We're going to get you on again after the summer. We'll yeah. uh, we'll check in, see how things are going. But really enjoy that, mate. Thanks mm -hmm. so much for coming on. I know, so, no worries. Thank you for inviting me. Like genuinely, no, thank you. That's um, all right. Also, as well, when we when we get in together to do this taste test, like come on, <laughs> what, 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 what is this? <laughs> we'll do it when all these restrictions are lifted. We'll yeah, get you definitely. over hundred percent because definitely. and you can bring that teddy bear thing that you've got. Mate, it's that's like, gone. That that's that's been gone. Has it? Oh, yeah. So that good. was in a competition. But, oh right. Yeah. Um, so somebody won that, but literally that blew up. Like I've had yeah. people messaging me like recently. Oh yeah, yeah. How, how's Barry? I'm like, oh, it, it was just competition. We've not got him anymore. He's like, oh, tell him like I hope he's well. I was like. <laughs> What? <laughs> what is that? It's proper mental. So I'm, I am looking to get one as um, kind of a same yeah. day mascot. Um, just run it around everywhere. But <laughs> yeah, that might work. I think. Yeah, yeah. Especially in town when it's rammed in the summer, you could do something with that. Yeah. yeah sure. What's your socials then? Website? How, how can people sign up? Um, through the website, really. So mm. um, www.sameday.co.uk or on the social media. Um, same day at, at same day underscore yeah. official yeah and that, that same day spell s-a-m-d-a-i for everybody listening as well yeah um so yeah please check it out if you're in sheffield sign up to the uh, vip membership card and if you're in manchester watch out because uh because yeah. ford is coming um <laughs> thank you mate no appreciate way, it. much appreciated mate thank you no, you're welcome that was class enjoyed that yeah, really good. 
thanks to Darren for his mm. time and for um, yeah opening up so much about all sorts of different topics, yeah. not just business, but you know the mental side of it, which we always talk about, mm. um, and a bit on a bit on race as well. Um, really interesting, obviously um, for us, you know, as, as white men, um, it's it's uh, always educational to get a different perspective because you know we don't know. Um, that lived experience. Mm. So great to great to get into some of that and to hear from him and hopefully adds value for, for our listeners as well. Yeah, especially Sheffielders. Check it out. I wasn't just saying that for the podcast. I really am going to get a card because it looks class. And he's doing, I know I'm hard is working on it. Um, yeah, brilliant. So yeah. Um, so yeah, this podcast was brought to you by Same Day. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Might as well shout it out. Thanks for sponsoring this podcast, Same Day. Uh, we don't have a coupon code but we might do on a future podcast. And that's not actually a sponsor. It's just we want to shout out. Yeah. Uh, and we'll we'll keep shouting out Darren on the same day um, because it's brilliant. And uh, yeah. yeah, we want him to um, you know, continue with his success and continue with his building his business. Yes. Because uh, it's brilliant. Yeah, it is. It's quality. Um, so, yeah. No, thanks very much, Darren. Who's next, James? Who's up next week? Yeah, so next week, um, as we said, said last week, which um, wasn't the case. May or we, may not be up next week. We got another guest in between, uh, Jamie. Jamie Crummy, the founder of Too Good To Go. So we're really looking forward to that. Um, fellow food industry, um, surplus food retailer. innovator. Yeah. Retailer. Um, and a great, great story as well, which we mentioned last week, um, how he built his app and stuff like that from from nowhere really from yeah. nothing can't wait to hear about that um so really looking forward to that story um and yeah that's about it from us uh, that'll be episode nine yes um, coming up so we'll keep trying to get one um, pretty much every week if we can mm. um let us know who you want us to have on the podcast if there's any entrepreneurs out there don't you have to be an entrepreneur anybody you think would be good for our podcast um, that you want us to have on let us know and we'll, we'll do what we can um let us know in the comments on social media dm us email us contact us you know how it goes mm-hmm. ring us if you want if you've got a number somehow which you i don't know is actually public uh but um or, yeah. any, or any other topics you'd like us to discuss absolutely yeah been, yeah yeah that's good yeah, i've been thinking about um a few topics that we might want to talk about yeah um, and darren's made me think of a few more as well so good. um if, if there's a week where we are without guest and it's just me and you uh, or even with a guest we can pick a topic and we can talk in more depth about it yeah um so yeah suggestions welcome on that yes absolutely and everything else as usual please leave a five star rating please subscribe please enjoy the podcast if you didn't enjoy the podcast please let us know you can go berserk if you want and really slag us off but please do it privately <laughs> or via email to us so that we can uh, we want to improve thanks everybody Thank see you, you next week see you next enjoy. week enjoy